Uh, my specialty is door and window carpentry. Wherever you have old houses, you have old windows. Wherever you have old windows, they used to have a wooden screen. What I'd like to attempt to do today is uh, show you the process of measuring, cutting, fitting, and installing a wood screen in a wood window. It happens to call for material that's one inch thick. So I used some dry pressure treated decking. All I have to do is run it through the saw and cut it to size. I want the bottom to be two and three quarters of an inch. I want the sides or the styles to be two and one quarter of an inch and I want the mid rail to mimic the meeting rail on the window so the top is two and a half and you can see it's good and dry I've been letting it dry for about five weeks here as you see that there's a rounded edge that's got to go You can put these together with screws, but it's a good idea to countersink the screw at least a quarter of an inch because we very well may have to plane a sixteenth or an eighth of an inch off the edge of this when we get to the job site. What I've opted to do is put it together with dowels and these will be completely concealed. The way I go about that is to make a pencil mark and I'm going to call this joint A. This is a doweling jig. I'm using 3 8 inch wood dowels. I'm using a 3 8 inch drill bit. So I'm going to use the 3 8 inch guide and I'm going to line it up with this pencil mark that I just made. All we need to do is glue these dowels in and assemble it. So yeah, I've marked all my joints A, B, C, D, E, F. This is called a Jorgensen pipe clamp. You just screw it together. And then for the screen molding, just cut some strips of whatever you got laying around. Now down here I like to use cypress because it seems to hold up a little bit better with the weather. I cut these to uh, 5 16 of an inch thick and I will miter them. I have 3 quarter inch and then for this mid rail I have a piece that is 1 inch. If you want to make it look a little more refined just take a block plane Let's uh, put one up on the bench and I'm going to show you how I paint them. You have to put a flat oil-based primer on them for the best results. And Rust-Oleum has about four or six different choices. And in this case, 
the homeowner wants to use a red paint. These are the little screen moldings. I begin with those. We're back again. This is an old house, so they used what's called um, uh, five quarter trim. And it's actually, the dimension of the casing is actually one and one sixteenth. And this comes pretty close to it. As I said, I dried it out for about five weeks uh, in my attic where it's good and hot. It's like a kiln up there. And it is relatively straight, but you might notice there's a little bit of a bend to it and this curved portion is going to fit in and when I put the hardware on when I press it into place it'll more or less straighten out then you have to size and fit everything to the particular opening another thing that occurs is the house will settle and it's not going to be a perfectly square opening that's just the charming thing about living in an old house. Nothing's perfect. Now the first thing to do is take a measurement. 71 and a half. I've already cut them to size. It goes to the left. This one is 71 and a half and it goes to the right. The dimension from here to here, 28 and 13 sixteenths. What I've done is I have cut a 10 degree bevel on the bottom of this piece to conform to the 10 degree slope on the sill and I'm going to make a mark on the left and on the right the slope portion goes down I can see that it's a little bit less than 90 degrees but it's not enough to concern ourselves with at the right side is more or less 90 degrees, but it might be a half degree off. It doesn't have to be fitted like a cabinet door. So I'm going to make my cuts at 90 degrees. I am going to knock the corner off on the inside so that it will fit in more tightly. I want this middle piece to correspond with the meeting rail of the window. So I'm going to make a little tick mark right here. I, I usually cut them a little bit over because I want it to fit as tightly as possible. Let's see how I did here. It's a little bit tight. Let me go back to the saw and uh, cut just a little bit more off, maybe a 32nd of an inch. You got to extrapolate it. I just lower the saw and I bump the material into the blade. I'm reasonably certain this will fit now. The old carpenter's trick, you take a little bit of soap, and put some soap on there. And there you have it, Mum. After it's assembled, it's a good tight fit, but it's actually fitted too tightly. And I'd like there to be a little bit of play where it goes up and down and back and forth about uh, uh, a little bit less than an eighth of an inch. 
and that'll give us plenty of room for expansion when it gets humid here in the summertime. All I need to do is plane a little bit off right about here. Let's just lay the pencil in there and let's go over to the cutting station. So I'm going to use my door vise. There's some paint here and here that tells me that's where it's rubbing the most. Let's just take a little bit off right there. Okay, I'm going to knock this sharp edge off. Do that to the other side. There, I've taken off a pretty good amount there. I'm going to make a series of pencil marks. The pencil marks help me visualize to what extent I'm removing the uh, edge of this screen frame. We are going to plane across the grain and I'm going to aspire to go down no further than that pencil mark. And of course, I'm mindful that there's a 10 degree bevel on the bottom of this frame. You know, just for good measure, I'm going to bevel the top about three degrees. I'm going to ease the edge or chamfer the top because it'll make it fit a little bit better. I'm going to do it to the bottom as well. I wish I could tell you how much fun this is. Let's go see how this fits. There it is. There's a little bit of room, top and bottom. There's a little bit of room sideways. What we have to do now is put the hardware on. These are the cleats. This is the hanger and this gets mounted to the screen that I just made and it just more or less hangs from it. Uh, I can't help but notice that when the house was built they pretty much used exactly the same hardware as I'm proposing to do here. If I take that off, it's going to leave an awful scar up there. Let's just see if uh, if this new hanger bracket will fit the old cleat. I think this will fit. And it does. We'll use the old cleats with the new hanger brackets. This is the center so i'm going to make a mark there's the mark for the sill let's come up about uh, a half an inch all right now don't drive it in all the way because i might want to add a twist or two to get this to fit tighter you want this eye bolt up and down so that the hook is sideways where I need to drill that hole for the eye bolt. And uh, you see the uh, screen is loose fitted. So I'm going to add a couple of twists here. 
There we go. There. That did it. There you have it, Mum. These are the screen moldings that we cut yesterday. I'm just going to put a 45 degree cut. Yeah, I'm cutting three at a time. The center piece is a little bit wider. It does not require a miter joint. This fits here. Since we painted all this such a dark color, I like to paint the ends. I use this bronze screen which is more like what they would have used back in the 1920s. And I'm going to staple it in with 5 16th inch long staples. So I'm going to start at the center here and pull it tight. Put one there one here. Now let's go down here and do the same thing. And I'm going to put a staple about every five inches. I want to make sure those staples are all the way in. And we've got this excess here. I'm just going to cut that off for the time being. I'm going to come across to the other side and starting in the middle, I'm going to pull it tight. And wherever I see a staple on the other side, I'm going to put a staple to correspond with it on this side. You see, sometimes the staples go in at an angle. Let's go to the top. And right in the center, I'm going to pull it. I don't, you don't want to pull it too tight. See, when you pull it too tight, it, it makes the uh, margin of the screen look wavy. You can make a mark. I'm going to cut about an eighth of an inch to that side of the mark. And the reason I'm using bronze screen is simply that it has a long lifespan. It's not unusual for this stuff to last 70 years. So this actually serves the purpose of a type of storm shutter that will repel a lot of windblown objects. So now we're ready to put the moldings on. I know this one goes on the left. I know this one goes on the right. This one goes in the center. And this one goes in the top. Let's start out in the corner. Let's come down here to the middle. Now these I'm going to put about every six or seven inches. I'm going to have to cut a little more off of that. This centerpiece, the thickness of this is a little less than the thickness of this. Makes a better looking joint. Okay, so all you have to do is just even these two pieces up. Yeah, you'll notice uh, from the onset, I put this piece on first and this piece second, and I left the remaining nails out deliberately so that I could adjust this joint. Okay. 
Now if you look at it from the side, I don't see any waviness or uh, any wrinkles, I should say, in the screen. So all I have to do is put the hardware back on, the hangers and the hook and eye lock, and it's ready to install. Let's go see how the homeowner likes her new screen. I only have eight more to do. Now I've got to go inside and latch it. So now that you have screens in your windows, you can ventilate the house and not have to use your heating and cooling system so much. And best of all, you can holler. Y'all remember to wipe your feet! Yeah, you know, I forgot to mention, we're going to shut up. We're going to all this trouble. You little agitator. We're going to all this trouble to fix it. Hang on, get this. These are the stops we cut. I'm not the, these are the, start that over. Mm -hmm. This is not the first time we've had work done on the house, Brian, and my husband is a lawyer. Oh, <laughs> well, my helper. <laughs> he left some of his groceries in the truck. Oh, this is a mess today. I'm a mess. I better put this away for safekeeping. I'll drop something on it and it'll become cobbler. That's that's my favorite barbecue. Shut up. I can't talk unless my pipe's lit. <laughs> Did you see that man with the pie? I don't know who he thought he was. Yeah. He lives in a quarter of the way house. They kicked him out of the halfway house. What do you want to do? Make it a Rembrandt? Hey, you don't mind if I smoke, do you? It's just a window screen, for God's sake. I don't inhale. Hi. You guys want to be part of my video? Uh, my camera <laughs> and uh, that's what I call living in Florida. Thanks again. Bye-bye. <laughs>